Hi everyone, it's Juno Dawson and I'm so pleased to be joining you for this year's Yelk at Home. I miss you all so much and I really, really hope that this time next year we can all be together again in London. But as it's Yelk weekend, um, we have a really, really special treat for you and I'm going to be doing an exclusive reading. If you're not familiar with my work, I am the author of The London Collection, which is clean, shiny, um, Meat Market, which won last year's Wire Book Prize, and then Wonderland, which is the third part of the series. Um, and I'm not going to be talking about those today because I'm sure this is the bit that everybody has been waiting for. It's the exclusive. I promised you an exclusive and it is, this is brand new information. The first time I've talked about this at all anywhere in the world. And surprise, this year there is going to be a brand new Juno Dawson novel. You didn't think I would leave you a whole year without a new book. So it gives me great great pleasure to exclusively reveal that the title of my new novel is Stay Another Day. <laughs> now, if you're of a certain age, um, Stay Another Day will mean one thing. It will mean big white parkas. It will mean E17. Girls Allowed did a cover version as well. And it was an amazing Christmas number one. And that's right, it is my first ever Christmas novel. Stain of the Day is the story of three siblings from Edinburgh. They're called Rowan and Fern and Willa McAllister. And they, each of them have kind of been estranged. They have gone their separate ways. Fern and Rowan are away at university in different cities and Willow um, has spent some time in a mental health facility as well. She's the younger sister. And this Christmas, it's the first time they're all going to be together for the first time in a year or so. We don't mention the pandemic in the novel, but it's kind of insinuated that these um, young people have been kept apart the way that we have all been kept apart these last two years. Um, and so when they get back together, Fern in particular is really excited for the big reunion. However, it turns out that between these three siblings, there is a really big secret that is going to cause all kinds of trouble this Christmas. It's a little bit lighter than the London Collection. I wrote the book last Christmas when we were all stuck inside during lockdown and I wanted to read a book that felt like all those films I watch every Christmas, whether it's Home Alone or Gremlins, Batman Returns, it's a Christmas film, I'll fight you on that. Um, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, um, oh my gosh, Happiest Season, just there are so many, so many Christmas films. And I wanted a novel that felt like that. So it's definitely still a Juno Dawson book. It's definitely um, sort of top end of YA. It's kind of edgy. They sound like Juno Dawson characters. But this one, I hope anyway, that it's full of heart and joy and soul and Christmas spirit and indeed Christmas spirits. Um, um, I and myself, I'm a huge fan of Christmas. Um, I particularly like the bit in the run up to Christmas. Um, I love all of December with all the Christmas parties and seeing your friends and doing secret Santa. I love putting up the tree while you've got a film on in the background. You, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I like, I like Christmas tat. I love, I love a white artificial Christmas tree wherever possible. And see, so, yeah, I'm hoping that this book will be a part of your Christmas this year. Maybe you will find it in your stocking on Christmas morning or on one of the days of Hanukkah or Diwali or whichever holiday you will be celebrating this winter. Um, the novel, Stone of the Day, will be available on October the 14th and it would mean the world if you could pre-order it right now. What are you waiting for? And of course, straight after I finished here, you can head over to all my social media channels at Juno Dawson to see the beautiful Stay Another Day cover designed by Alison Padley in all its Christmassy, tinselly glory. Um, but until 
Then until Christmas, I'm gonna give you a sneaky taster of what to expect um, with my first ever, and again, it's an exclusive for Yalk at Home reading of Stay Another Day. Um, I'm gonna read you a section from Rowan just because I think he is the funniest. Um, this reading will contain some explicit language, but again, if you've read my books, that shouldn't be a surprise, but maybe switch off now. I'll stick some headphones in if the children are indeed your parents in the room. Um, okay, so I'm gonna read, this is I think chapter four, um, and um, Rowan has arrived back at Edinburgh for the first time in a couple of years with his non-binary best friend, Sid. Okay, here we go. I'm excited. It's the first time I've ever read it anywhere to anyone. It's probably full of typos, which we're about to discover. It's too late now. It's gone to print. Sucks to be me. Okay, here we go then. This is, for the first time ever, Stay Another Day. How do I forget every single year how fucking cold Scotland is? Bristol has a whole other subtropical climate, I swear. My sateen baseball jacket just isn't gonna cut it. By the time we find Dad parked in the drop-off zone, my buns have permafrost on them. Dad whacks up the heating in the people carrier and it smells of burnt toast. Thanks for the lift, Dad. You are quite welcome. I am quantifiably shooketh because he is starting to look old, middle-aged, descending on, it, on him like a progressive facial disease. like. When I left Edinburgh a little over a year ago, he was handsomely craggy. Now he's teetering perilously close to saggy. It's not my fault. I did tell him exactly where he could get Botox and he laughed like it was the maddest suggestion in the world. I personally can't wait to grow all disgracefully. I want that scurrily taut real housewives facelift look, collagen fillers injected directly into a piece of cheap ham. Are we not waiting for Fern and Ophella? I asked Dad. No, she'll not be here for a few hours yet. He concentrates as he pulls out of the frantic car park. I swivel in the passenger seat as not to exclude Sid. Mum was like, get a cab. Lol, do you have any idea how many handjobs I'd have to sell to afford that? Sid snorts from the back seat and Dad briefly takes his eyes off the road to check if I'm kidding. I hope that's a joke. Dad, I grin as if I'd bother with hand jobs, not worth the effort. He half grimaces, you'll get out and walk in a minute. Don't know why you can't get a part-time job like your sister. I blink pointedly in his direction. Father, unlike Fern, I have to work on my craft outside of workshops. This is a lie. I am not acting outside of my course at all. I definitely could get a job, but it'd have to be on a Saturday or Sunday and then I wouldn't be able to go out on Friday or Saturdays, so I'd literally either shit in my hands and clap. I'd be a wonderful wee sex worker as it happens. I'm good at two things, acting and sex. So far, neither have made me any money whatsoever. I've had a variety of shy customer facing jobs over the holidays. Being a sex worker is probably much more dignified than the summer I did at Pets at Home. You haven't lived until you've milked Pomeranian's anal glands. It's only a short drive from Edinburgh to Inverleith. On the way, we pass the grim Gothic turrets of Finian's, the prison or school I attended for seven years. It doesn't matter that three years have passed since I was last there. I still get antsy as it comes into view. I point it out to Sid who mutters their condolences under the breath. Could have been worse. At least we didn't have to board. Doubt I'd have survived that. A few minutes later, and Dad pulls the car into the drive. And there's a coziness and familiarity, I guess. Home is where the home is. For the next week, I don't have to worry about cooking or cleaning or check my bank balance. From the back seat, I heard an awed gasp from Sid. Ro, you said your house was big. You didn't say it was a castle. I make a weird lip, but I won't be trialling again. I both do and don't want them to be impressed, but I certainly don't want Sid to feel like some fucking little Dorrit orphan. Hardly, I drawl, already 20% more Scottish after five minutes in the presence of my father. Rowan, it's a mansion. I wouldn't go that far, Dad says, but it's been in my family for over a century. 
I suppose it is fairly imposing from the outside, set back off the road with its sweeping drive and tower room, although the Christmas lights soften it. If I hadn't lived here pretty much my whole life, I'd be like, fuck this haunted house, I'm off to the premiere in. My dad's family are pure evil, I tell Sid. I lean in close as we step out of the car. They were slavers, I hiss. Thank you, Rowan, Dad huffs. We don't know that. I mouth at Sid and they make an appropriately horrified face. What do you do, Mr McAllister? Oh God, please call me Dale. I can't handle Mr McAllister all week. I'm at Holyrood. Sid looks confused, so I step in. My father is that most perverse of beasts, a Scottish Tory. Ah! Oh! Sid exclaims, almost a reflex, and I howl with laughter. Sorry, I mean, it's fine. There's nothing that you can say that's worse than what I've already heard from Rowan. He's at the boot, unloading our suitcases in my very small fuck turf's tote bag filled with presents. I actually put a lot of thought into everyone's second-hand books. And hell, at least I'm here this year. Bitches, I'm the gift. Last Christmas must have been... Well, the less said about that, the better. Thank you so much for letting me come, Sid tells Dad. Not at all. Any friend of Rowan's is a friend of ours. He talks about you all the time, Sid. We're not together, Dad. Let it go, I shout as I plough through the front door. Each year, the wreath on the door gets more elaborately bland. I'm a big fan of bad taste Christmas. White plastic trees, glittery Virgin Marys, and meters and meters of threadbare tinsel. Mum, however, favors a uniform color scheme. And the wreath tells me this year, it must be purple and gold. Christmas at Cadbury's? As soon as I step inside, I smell fresh pine and the nasal tip punch of a Yankee candle, and also faintly curry. Ah, oh, fuck it, it's Christmas. I can't be mad at a time of year where people thrust alcoholic beverages in your hand before noon. A glorious mistletoe bow, 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 hangs over the door in the hall. Sid again is wowed. I wonder what Christmas is like around theirs. Mum, I call. Oh, my favourite son. She blurs out of the kitchen at the end of the corridor to greet me, all beads and bangles as ever. Was she always this tiny? I loom over her like a skinny gay ogre and get a lungful of Joe Malone as I squeeze her hard. Is that good for your hair? She reaches up and fingers my peroxide silver hair. You're one to talk. Not one among us can remember her natural hair colour, except should a dad who can check if the curtains match the drapes, I guess. And this must be Sid, she says, and I take a step back to see if there's a reaction. Mum lectures at the university, so she's not quite as clueless as Dad, exposed to vaguely interesting people daily. That said, there's a certain type that studies at Edinburgh, and he must suck to not get into Cambridge, Oxford, or Durham. Nice to meet you, Dr McAllister. Sid steps forward and offers a much scarred, much tattooed arm. Mum gives their hand a firm shake. An absolute pleasure, but please call me Chris. Everyone does even at work. I can't thank you enough for this. It was here or... Well, I don't know where else I would have gone, Sid says sincerely. They're being polite. This is a mercy mission for me. Sid would have just been fine at our orphan's dinner back in Bristol. Mum shakes her head. Not another word. It's Christmas and our home is your home for the next six days. I'm dead inside, obviously, but I'm actually quite proud of her. When I asked if Sid could come, she didn't hesitate to say yes. Didn't even need the extended Britain's Got Talent sob story. Dale, you show Sid up to their room. She got their pronouns right first time. She must have been practicing. I'm afraid you've got the box room. Seriously, the sofa would have been amazing. Sid follows Dad upstairs, taking my bag too. Willow emerges from the shadows on the staircase, all pale and tragic like some secret gothic attic child. She sighed, she... She shies away from Sid like a nervy sparrow, offering only a timid hi. This is our youngest, Willow. Dad saves me the introduction. Good to meet you. Sid gives a hearty nod as they cross. Willow blushes, 
tucks her mermaid length hair behind her ear and continues to the hall. She looks like pure shy. I fight the urge to give mum an accusatory look. A heads up would have been nice. You wouldn't think it humanly possible, but she somehow looks even thinner than she did last summer. Drowning in a tent of a hoodie, we could all comfortably camp in. So it's one step forward, two steps fucking back. You may enter my personal space. I beckon my sister towards me with a forced grin. I fold her baby bird burns into a gentle hug. Oh, you'd snap her. Yum, you smell of dead nana. She laughs. It's lavender body cream. I tell her I like it. I don't tell her that her eyes are too fucking big for her head and I can see her skull through her peach fuzz skin. Eat you mad bitch, eat. I like your hair, she says. You really outgage yourself. You have no idea, I can barely sit down. Oh, for heaven's sake, mum slaps my arm. Can we not, Rowan? She leads me towards the kitchen and she didn't tell me Sid was Asian. I give her my finest, what the fuck, face. Relax, mum, they're from Rumcon. They celebrate Christmas. Willa laughs and mum rolls her eyes. Oh, you know what I meant. I literally don't, but whatever. Maybe later we can play an excruciating parlour game where you all try to guess where they're really from. The answer, by the way, is that Sid's grandparents are Nepalese, but I'm not going to explain that origin story to my mother. Oh, give over. I never said that. We reach the kitchen and I grab a quality street out of the decorative bowl. She slaps my hand. Ow! Don't spoil your dinner, she says, attending to a vat of curry on the stove. It's one of those hugely aspirational Pinterest kitchens designed to be a buzzing hive for a big family with a hunky rustic table and enough room on the range to prepare a feast. <clears throat> Smeg fridge and Le Crusette pots proudly on display. What will mum and dad do once Willow leaves? If she ever does, they'll be haunting this big house like ghosts. We'll wait for Fern and Tom to eat. They get in around eight. I shake my head and make a great show of putting a fudge in my mouth. Finger a fudge, lol. We're meeting some people at CC Blooms at nine, so I can't. You're going out? Willow asks sadly. Rowan! What? I know what mum's about to say. It's one of her stock phrases. You've been home all of two minutes and you're already rushing out. Of course I'm rushing out. I've been escaping since the day I was born. Sid gets it. FOMO. It's real. I feel it, a physical affliction, like a panicky skitter in my chest, that there are memories being made without me. There's a world out there just writhing with neon potential, and it's not going to leak in through the letterbox into this house. In fact, it would actively swerve it. I've always felt this itchiness in my bones, the need to get away. I don't even know what it is I need to get away from or what it is I'm looking for, but I know whatever it is, it's out there waiting for me. I don't know exactly what it is, but if I don't go hunting, I'll never find out. <gasps> oh my gosh, that was so exciting. Stay another day, available October the 14th. I cannot wait, wait, wait for you to meet, not just Rowan, but also Fern and Willa, who have their own sections in the book as well. There are three narrators, so it's three stories. Um, I hope you have enjoyed that reading. I hope you're having a blast over this Yalk weekend. I really, really honestly hope that as you know, we head into the autumn and winter that authors we can all get back on the road and do what we really love which is meeting readers and i miss you all dreadfully and um, i will see you really really soon um yeah like i said head over to social media now to see the cover reveal as well um until next year bye y'all